Greetings and salutations, fellow pilots. This is Akira Shin. I am very excited to bring you this video of the brand new premium aircraft, part of the Operation West Wall addition to the game. Those aircraft being the Dornier DO-335A1 and the XF-15C, an American fighter. First up, we have the DO-335A1. It is a German heavy fighter. Uh, and both of these aircraft are Tier 8. The DO-335A1 is equipped with two 15mm cannons that do 85 damage per second with a medium rate of fire of 420 rounds per minute and a very good effective firing range of 720 meters. The DO-335A1 also has one 30 millimeter cannon. It does 210 damage per second with a rate of fire of 90 rounds per minute, so a very low rate of fire, but has an excellent effective firing range of 1,000 meters. It also equips four bombs, each of which do very good damage, 5,000 damage within a 75 meter radius. Now one of the key features of the DO-335A1 is that it has high airspeed and a long lasting boost. So we definitely want to accentuate that strength of this aircraft. And to do that, I have equipped as upgrades Engine Tuning 3, which increases engine power by 5%, as well as Improved Aircraft Polish, which increases maximum airspeed by 5%, and increases acceleration in a dive by 25%. So not only can that help this aircraft get uh, down very fast, but it can also help it build up speed to climb back up once it's done its business. This aircraft is, however, ineffective in terms of maneuvering combat. Uh, so it's not any type of, you know, <laughs> uh, high performance turning aircraft. Uh, but to somewhat improve that deficiency, I have equipped improved Flaps 3, which does two things. First of all, it increases the efficiency of the aircraft's airspeed reduction while idle and it does so by 20 percent but more importantly for our purposes uh, it increases maneuverability in turns by three percent now that doesn't make this aircraft a, a good turning uh, plane but it does help a little bit in terms of pilot skills again working on the theme of improving this aircraft's strengths, so, so accentuating those strengths, I have equipped Engine Guru 1 and Engine Guru 2. Collectively, those skills stack to provide a 5% increase in engine thrust and top speed. I only have six skill points on this particular pilot. So I was left with, you know, one extra skill point, and I decided to put that into Firefighter to give us an option to deal with uh, the situation where this aircraft catches on fire. And that skill extinguishes fire by active maneuvering. So you gain and maintain a high angular velocity in any axis to extinguish the fire. Now. If I had an additional skill point, I would drop that firefighter skill and instead go with aerodynamics expert. And I would do that because aerodynamics expert increases the effectiveness of all three of our upgrades. So aircraft polish, improved flaps, and engine tuning are all improved by aerodynamics expert. Once I had the skill points, I would also 
consider specking into Demolition Expert, which increases damage caused by bombs and rockets and their blast radius by 15%. So this aircraft does have four good bombs, uh, and so it's worth accentuating their effects. For ammunition, I have gone with universal ammunition for both sets of cannons. The 15 millimeter cannons have a medium chance of fire and a high chance of critical damage. For our 30 millimeter cannons, the universal ammunition does full levels of critical damage and chance of fire. In terms of consumables, this aircraft is indicated as having vulnerable engines. And so I have chosen to go with automatic engine restarter. Our speed in this aircraft is both our tactical and defensive advantage. So we want to make sure that our engines don't get knocked out. The automatic engine restarter consumable automatically repairs a damaged engine. Also, this aircraft is indicated as having large dimensions, so it's a big old target up there. And so I have chosen to go with Control Surface Auto Trim, which automatically restores controllability of wings and tail. Because the aircraft has large dimensions, there's a significant likelihood that our wings or our tail will be hit. And again, keeping this aircraft moving is its strength. Both automatic engine restarter and control surface auto trim are gold consumables. Because of that, they have a 60 second cooldown and they are activated automatically. You don't have to think about it. When the problem arises, they activate. Now the non-gold versions of those consumables have a 90 second cooldown and activate manually. For our third consumable, I have gone with what I think is an absolute must for this type of aircraft, which is engine cooling. It reduces engine overheating by 70%, and it has a 240 second cooldown. That is important because when our long lasting boost has expired, we can activate engine cooling and we're back up to 70% or more of our engine boost. So we can keep on trucking, which is again so critical for this aircraft. Looking at the aircraft specifications, its optimum altitude is 2,500 meters, so it is a high climber. All speed is 200 kilometers per hour, which is pretty high, so this aircraft will easily stall. You have to you know, be cognizant of that. Its optimum airspeed 677 kilometers per hour, so it is a very fast aircraft. And its greatest weakness, average time to turn 360 degrees, 14 seconds. That is, uh, you know, a lifetime in a turning dogfight. You want to avoid turning dogfights with this aircraft. This is a zoom and boom fighter, for sure. Its maximum dive speed is 950 kilometers per hour, so it is very fast on the dive. Its top speed at best altitude, so when this aircraft is at its best altitude, it's going to do 760 kilometers per hour, which is significant. In terms of paint schemes, you are currently looking at the marine paint scheme. This is Desert, Winter, and finally Summer. Each one of these paint schemes provides an additional 10% concealment for the aircraft. I really like the uh, Summer paint scheme there. And of course, the unique design for this is that it has both the uh, front propeller system as well as the canard design with the propeller in the rear. 
which is very unique. Okay, so what we are going to do now is to head over to World of Warplanes website and compare this fighter to its other tier 8 peers. All right, so we are here on World of Warplanes website using their awesome compare aircraft tool. And we have the Donier DO-335A1 file ready to compare against its tier 8 peers. First up, we have the Messerschmitt ME262 Schwalbe and the Westland P-1056. Now with each one of these aircraft, I have gone in and selected uh, all of their upgrades so that we're looking at each aircraft in the best light. And right off the bat, we see what will be a consistent theme in this comparison, which is the gun armaments for the DO-335 a1 are inferior to those of the ME262 and the P1056 by what appears to be a considerable margin. So why is that? Let's look into that a little bit more specifically. So looking first at the ME262, it has four 30 millimeter cannons each of which do 200 damage per second. Now, the DO-335A1 has two sets of cannons. It has two 15 millimeter cannons, which do 85 damage per second. So you see that the 30 millimeters on the ME-262, of course, significantly outclass that. It also has a 30 millimeter cannon that does 210 damage per second, so slightly greater damage than the 30 millimeter cannons on the ME262. But the DO-335A1 only has one 30 millimeter cannon, whereas the ME262 has four 30 millimeter cannons. So that is why the ME262 is indicated as being significantly superior uh, in terms of armaments as compared to the 335A1. Then if we look at the P1056, we see a similar story here. The 1056 has four 20 millimeter cannons that do 130 damage per second as again compared to the two 15 millimeter cannons and one 30 millimeter cannon on the DO-335A1 but the P-1056 also has two 40 millimeter cannons that do 240 damage per second. So again, a significant margin of superiority for this aircraft in terms of armament over the DO-335A1. Moving on to bombs and rockets. Now the DO-335A1 is superior to the ME262 in terms of bombs. The 335A1 has four bombs, which do 5,000 damage each within a 75 meter radius. In comparison, the ME262 either has two bombs that do 5,000 damage each, so the same amount of damage as those on the 335A1, but there are only two of them. Or as I have equipped, um, it has 24 rockets that only do 150 damage each. 
Those are, of course, salvo-fired, so they're really intended mainly for other aircraft. Then looking at the P-1056, it has uh, 2,000-pound bombs that do 6,000 damage each. Now, collectively speaking, that's 12,000 damage as compared to the collective 20,000 damage of the bombs of the uh, DO-335 A1. But what also makes the difference here is that the P-1056 also has eight rockets that each do 1,500 damage. Looking next to survivability, the DO-335A1 has the same uh, amount of hit points and survivability as the P-1056. However, it has greater hit points in stated survivability as compared to the ME-262. But of course, when it comes to survivability, you have to consider the speed of the aircraft because speed is survival many times for these uh, fighters. And the top speed at best altitude, so when the D-335A1 is at its ideal altitude, uh, its airspeed, its top airspeed, is inferior to that of the ME-262 by 145 kilometers per hour. It is also slightly inferior to the top airspeed of the P-1056 by 35 kilometers per hour. Now I know I, you see there's a uh, red there next to the P-1056, but as you can plainly see, it, the P-1056 does have higher top speed, so that's just kind of a glitch there. Maximum dive speed. Uh, again, the ME-262 outclasses the 335A1, but the 335A1 does have a somewhat higher dive speed, maximum dive speed, than the P-1056. In terms of maneuverability, the 335A1 has the same average time to turn 360 degrees as both the ME-262 and the P-1056. So none of these aircraft are particularly good at turning. Now, in terms of, man of maneuverability, the 335A1 is indicated as being superior, and the reason for that, even though they have the same turn rate, is that 335A1 has a better rate of roll than either the ME-262 or the P-1056. Optimum airspeed for the 335A1 is lower than that for the ME-262. Let's just face it, the ME-262 is just a really fast aircraft. However, it does have a higher optimum airspeed than the P-1056. And this is, I think, a significant stat. Uh, the stall speed for the 335A1 is by 50 kilometers per hour better than that of the ME-262 and by 60 kilometers per hour better than the P-1056. And kind of going along with that, if you look at the rate of climb, the 335A1 is also very superior to that of either the ME-262 or the P-1056. So if you're in a 335A1 and you're trying to get away from either the ME-262 or the P-1056, I would suggest climbing straight up. Uh, because those other aircraft are going to stall prior to the 335A1 and will be lagging behind the 335A1 
in the climb. Uh, optimum altitude for these aircraft as for the ME262 is the same as the 335A1. However, the P-1056 is 500 meters inferior to the 335A1. So next up, we have the Lockheed XP-58 Chain Lightning, which is an aircraft that I recently reviewed. You might want to check out that video. And we also have the Chancevault XF-5U Pancake, which I also recently reviewed. In terms of gun armaments, again, a fairly consistent theme here. Both the Chain Lightning and the Pancake are superior to the 335A1. So let's just look at that and see why that is. Looking first at the Chain Lightning, we see that it has four 37 millimeter cannons, each of which do 200 damage per second. So clearly that is superior to just the two 15 millimeter and one 30 millimeter cannons on the 335A1. In terms of the pancake, it has four 20 millimeter cannons, each of which do 170 damage per second. So in, in that respect, it's, it's kind of a number of cannons advantage for the pancake. Looking next at survivability, uh, in terms of hit points, both the pancake and the chain lightning have higher hit points than the DO-335A1. Top speed at best altitude, the chain lightning and the pancake again superior to the 335A1. The 335A1, however, does have the advantage over both of those other aircraft with regard to maximum dive speed by 50 kilometers per hour for, in comparison to the chain lightning and by 100 kilometers per hour in comparison to the pancake. Maneuverability, the chain lightning is one second faster on the turn than the 335A1. The pancake is 1.8 seconds faster on the turn than the 335A1. However, um, in terms of rate of roll, the 335A1 is superior to both those other aircraft. Of course, I would tend to take superiority in the turn over superiority in the roll, but that's my personal preference. Optimum airspeed, the 335A1 has a higher optimum airspeed than either the pancake or the chain lightning. Stall speed for the 335A1 and the chain lightning is the same. However, uh, the pancake, which has one of the best stall speeds in the game, is 140 kilometers per hour superior as compared to the 335A1. So the 335A1 is going to stall much sooner than the pancake. But that's true with most aircraft compared to the pancake. In terms of optimum altitude, uh, the chain lightning and the 335A1 have the same optimum altitude. The pancake is 500 meters inferior to the 335A1. The 335A1 has a superior rate of climb as compared to the chain lightning. However, the pancake is slightly superior to the 335A1. Not by a lot, though. It's not a huge margin. All right, so I think the consistent theme is that the DO-335A1 is consistently inferior to its peers in the gun armament department. So uh, I, I would say, you know, with that comparison, there's a pretty good argument to be made 
that the DO-335A1 needs to be uh, buffed in the gun armament department because it seriously lags behind its competitors. So I hope that comparison has helped. Okay, so having gone over the DO-335A1's specifications and my build for it, what we are going to do now is to take a look at the Curtis XF-15C, an American fighter. This fighter is equipped with four 20mm cannons that do 115 damage per second. They have a rate of fire of 420 rounds per minute, so about a medium rate of fire. And they have a very good effective firing range of 760 meters. The aircraft is indicated as having high airspeed and a long lasting boost. Like the DO-335A1, I have chosen to accentuate that strength by equipping as upgrades engine tuning 3 which increases engine power by 5% and what does that do well that helps this aircraft uh, maintain its speed and turns it helps it to uh, climb all those sorts of activities that require a powerful engine engine tuning 3 is going to help that I've also equipped aircraft polish 2 which increases the aircraft's already high top speed by 5%. The XF-15C is said to have good maneuverability and horizontal turns. To, to accentuate that strength of the aircraft, I have chosen to equip lightweight airframe 3, which increases maneuverability in all axes by 3%. You could choose to sacrifice one of the speed-related upgrades by also equipping Control Surface Adjustment 3, which increases maneuverability in turns by 3%. I chose Lightweight Airframe 3 over Control Surface Adjustment 3 because Control Surface only increases maneuverability in turns by 3%, whereas Lightweight Airframe 3 increases maneuverability in all axes by 3%. So it would seem to me to be the superior skill if you have to choose between the two of them. In terms of pilot skills, I have chosen again to accentuate this aircraft's strength of having high airspeed by specking in Engine Guru 1 and Engine Guru 2, which collectively stack to increase this aircraft's engine thrust and top speed by 5%. I've also specced into Aerodynamics Expert, which accentuates the effects of all three of our chosen upgrades. So, aircraft polish, lightweight airframe, and engine tuning are all improved by Aerodynamics Expert. So we have a good synergy between our pilot skills and our chosen upgrades. If you have additional skill points, you might want to spec into Aerobatics Expert, which, which increases maneuverability in all axes by 2%. For ammunition, I have selected Universal, which has equal chance of fire and critical damage. This aircraft is indicated as having vulnerable engines, so I have selected as a consumable automatic engine restarter. It is also indicated as having large dimensions, so like the DO-335A1, it is a big target up there. Uh, and our wings and tail are therefore prone to being damaged, and speed is life with this aircraft. So I equipped control surface auto trim which automatically restores controllability of wings and tail. To further accentuate this aircraft's good maneuverability and our upgrade of lightweight airframe, I have equipped heavy duty control surfaces which increases the aircraft's maneuverability in all axes for 10 seconds. That is used manually 
In comparison, automatic engine restarter and control surface auto trim activate automatically in the gold version and have a 60 second cooldown. The heavy duty control surfaces has a 60 second cooldown as well. For these three consumables, their non-gold versions have 90 second cooldowns and activate manually. In terms of the aircraft specifications, its optimum altitude is 2200 meters. Now if this aircraft is designed to go after the O335 A1, it has a 300 meter disadvantage in that department in terms of optimum altitude. Uh, however, average time to turn 360 degrees, uh, this aircraft does have a two second advantage over the DO-335 A1. Optimum airspeed, it is slower than the DO-335 A1 at 508 kilometers per hour. It does, however, have a better stall speed of 160 kilometers per hour compared to the 200 kilometers per hour of the DO-335 A1. Top speed at best altitude for this aircraft is 760 kilometers per hour. Its, its maximum dive speed is 900 kilometers per hour. Looking at paint schemes, you are currently seeing the marine paint scheme, which looks very sharp. This is desert. Winter. And summer. My favorite being marine, so we'll stick with that. Okay, so what we're going to do now is head over to World of Warplanes website and compare the XF-15C to its other Tier 8 fighter peers. So let's do that now. So we are here on World of Warplanes website again using their Compare Aircraft tool. Uh, and then we have lined up the Tier 8 fighters to compare against the Curtis XF-15C. And again, I have gone into each aircraft and made sure that they have been fully upgraded. So we're looking at each aircraft in the best light. And if you're trying to do this yourself, you want to make sure that the last aircraft you're uh, selecting is the one that you want to compare against. So we selected the Curtis XF-15C last so that it would actually appear first on the roster. First up, we have the Lockheed P-80A Shooting Star, which is another premium aircraft. And we have the North American P-51H Mustang. Famous aircraft there. And what we see is that the XF-15C, in terms of armaments, is indicated to be uh, somewhat superior to the P-80A Shooting Star and the P-51H Mustang. So let's look and see why that might be. Looking at the P-51H Mustang, we see that it has six 12.7 millimeter machine guns so it does not have cannons and they each do 65 damage per second with a rate of fire of 800 rounds per minute and an effective firing range of 560 rounds now we compare that to the four 20 millimeter cannons of the XF-15C and the 20 millimeter cannons of the XF-15C do 115 damage per second. Now they do of course have a lower rate of fire of 420 rounds per minute as compared to the machine guns of the P-51, but 
the 20 millimeter cannons of the XF-15C have a 200 meter effective firing range advantage over the P-51 Mustangs machine guns. So if these two aircraft were going head to head, the XF-15C will be able to put rounds on the P-51 Mustang 200 meters sooner than the Mustang would be able to put rounds on the XF-15C. And that can make a world of difference in a head-on matchup. Uh, looking at the P-80A Shooting Star, it also has six 12.7 millimeter machine guns, which do 72 damage per second as compared to the 115 damage per second of the XF-15C. Now, the rate of fire on the Shooting Star's machine guns is just huge. It's 1,100 rounds per minute. But again, uh, it has an inferior effective firing range as compared to the XF-15C. So it is cannons versus machine guns that cause the XF-15C to be indicated to be superior uh, somewhat to the Shooting Star and the Mustang. Uh, none of these aircraft have bombs and rockets, so that's not really an issue in this comparison. In terms of survivability, the XF-15C uh, has greater hit points than either the Shooting Star or the Mustang. So there is definitely a survivability advantage for the XF-15C. In terms of top speed at best altitude, so when these aircraft are at their optimum best altitude, uh, top speed, the Shooting Star and the Mustang are both uh, superior to the XF-15C. Not by huge margins, but, you know, significant enough numbers. The maximum dive speed for the P-51H and the XF-15C are the same, whereas the Shooting Star has a slightly better diving speed, maximum diving speed. Now, a significant disadvantage that the XF-15C has comes in the form of its average time to turn 360 degrees. Uh, the Shooting Star and the Mustang both have a 1.2 second advantage over the XF-15C, and that, that can mean all the world of difference in a turning fight. Both the Shooting Star and the Mustang also have superior roll rates. Optimum altitude, P-51 and the Shooting Star, both superior to the XF-15C in that particular stat. The Shooting Star is indicated as stalling sooner than the XF-15C by 20 kilometers per hour, whereas the P-51H is indicated as uh, stalling later than the XF-15C by 20 kilometers per hour. Altitude, uh, the XF-15C has the same optimum altitude as the Shooting Star, whereas the Mustang has a 300 meter advantage. Rate of climb, the XF-15C has a much greater rate of climb than either the Shooting Star or the P-51H. All right, next up we have the Xinyang JL-1A-37, and we have the Supermarine Spitfire 14. Certainly one of everyone's favorites, probably. In terms of gun armaments, the XF-15C uh, has the same level of gun, gun armaments as the Spitfire, uh, whereas the JL-1A-37 is indicated as being slightly superior in that category. So let's take a look and see why that may be. So the JL-1A-37 
has two 23 millimeter cannons and one 37 millimeter cannon. The two 23 millimeter cannons do greater damage per second than the 20 millimeter cannons on the XF5C by about 55 damage per second. Uh, they also have a higher rate of fire uh, and a slightly longer effective firing range. The 37 millimeter cannon does 240 damage per second as compared to the 115 damage per second of the 20 millimeter cannons on the XF-5C. However, of course, the 37 millimeter cannon has a much lower rate of fire and about a 140 meter inferior effective firing range than the 20 millimeters on the XF-5C. But collectively, these cannons are said to be superior to those of the XF-5C. Looking at the Spitfire, it has four 20 millimeter cannons that, that have the exact same stats as the 20 millimeter cannons of the XF-15C. In terms of bombs and rockets, again, none of these aircraft have those, so it's not an issue in this comparison. Uh, for survivability, the XF-15C has greater hit points than either the JL-1A37 or the Spitfire. Top speed at best altitude, the JL-1A37 uh, is superior by 90 kilometers per hour, whereas the Spitfire is inferior by 30 kilometers per hour. Maximum dive speed, the JL-1A37 has the advantage over the XF-15C, whereas the XF-15C has the advantage over the Spitfire. Average time to turn 360 degrees, however, uh, of course, uh, as everyone probably could guess, the Spitfire has a significant advantage over the XF-15C by 3.4 seconds. Uh, which is a lifetime in a turning dogfight. Um, but the JL-1A37 is 0.3 seconds uh, inferior to the XF-15C. So not a huge difference there. Rate of roll, um, the XF-15C is superior to both the Spitfire and the JL-1A37 in that category. Optimum airspeed, Again, the XF-157 is superior to those other two aircraft, uh, but not by much in comparison to the JL-1A37, only four kilometers per hour. Spitfire just tends to be a slower aircraft. Uh, so it's, it, you know, it's got a 117 kilometer per hour deficiency as compared to the XF-15C. Stall speed, uh, the JL-1A37 will stall prior to the XF-15C, whereas the XF-15C will stall prior to the Spitfire. Optimum altitude, the JL-1A37 is the same as the XF-157, whereas the Spitfire is inferior to the XF-157 by 600 meters. The XF-157 is significantly superior in terms of rate of climb over both the Spitfire and the JL-1A37. All right, so next up we have the Tachikawa Kai-94-2, an excellent aircraft, and we have the Mitsubishi J-8M Shusui. I guess that's how you pronounce that. <laughs> All right, in terms of gun armaments, these aircraft are basically the same. Uh, slight advantage for the Kai-94, but not anything of great significance. In terms of survivability, uh, the 
XF15C has greater hit points than either the Chi-94 or the J8M. Top speed at best altitude, XF15C has a 40 km per hour advantage over the Chi-94, whereas, and not surprisingly, the J8M has a 160 km per hour advantage over the XF15C. Maximum dive speed, the Chi-94 is inferior to the XF15C by 50 km per hour, whereas the J8M is superior to the XF15C by 100 km per hour. Time to turn 360 degrees. The XF15C is not surprisingly uh, significantly inferior to the Chi-94. The Chi-94 is a very good turning aircraft um, and the Chi-94 is superior by 3.4 seconds, which as I mentioned previously is just a lifetime in terms of a turning dogfight. And of course the J-8M is just not a good turning aircraft at all and is inferior to the XF-15C by 2.4 seconds. Do not get in a turning dogfight with the J-8M for sure. In terms of rate of roll, uh, the XF-15C is inferior to the Chi-94 whereas it is superior to the J-8M. Optimum airspeed, the Chi-94 is a slower aircraft in that regard than the XF-15C by significant margin, 117 kilometers per hour. Uh, the J-8M has a slight four kilometer per hour advantage over the XF-15C, so certainly nothing, to, nothing of significance there. Stall speed, the XF-15C will stall sooner than either the Chi-94 or the J-8M. Optimum altitude, the Chi-94 and the XF-15C have the same meter optimum altitude, whereas the J-8M has a significant 800 meter advantage in terms of altitude. That, that's pretty huge. In fact, the 3,000 meters of the J-8M is one of the highest optimum altitudes in the game. Rate of climb though, the XF-15C is a much better climber than either the Chi-94 or the J-8M. Significantly so in comparison to the J-8M. All right, moving on to our German counterparts here. We have the Focke Wolf TA-152, an excellent aircraft, and the Messerschmitt ME-209A, also one of my favorite aircraft. Looking at gun armaments, the TA-152 has an advantage uh, over the XF-15C, and those are those huge cannons of the TA-152 that just do tremendous damage per uh, shot, although they have a very low rate of fire. However, the ME-209A's armaments are indicated as being inferior to those of the XF-15C. So let's take a look at that. The TA-152 has three 30 millimeter cannons and they each do 140 damage per second. Again, you see that really low rate of fire, but they have a huge effective firing range, which is a significant advantage over the firing range of the 20 millimeters on the XF-15C. And second set of cannons on the TA-152, also same thing. In terms of the ME-209A, uh, it has three cannons. Two of them are 20 millimeter cannons, and those do 95 damage per second, so not as much as the 115 damage per second of the 20 millimeters on the XF-15C. But the 209A also has one 30 millimeter cannon which does 140 damage per second, uh, but there's only one of those as compared to the four 20 millimeter cannons on the XF 
one five C. So that's it's basically a numbers game uh, in terms of number of cannons that makes the difference uh, and causes the two o nine A to be indicated inferior to to the XF one five C. Looking at survivability, the XF-15C has greater hit points than either the TA-152 or the ME-209A. Top speed at best altitude, uh, it is the same for the XF-15C and the ME-209A, but the TA-152 has a slight 20 km per hour advantage over the XF-15C. Maximum dive speed is the same for all three of these aircraft. In terms of, of maneuverability, the German aircraft here have a significant advantage over the XF-15C, especially the 209A, a 1.7 second advantage. Not as much of an advantage for the TA-152, but still enough to win the turning dogfight. Rate of roll, the TA-152 and the ME-209A again have the advantage in maneuverability. Optimum airspeed, uh, slightly better for the TA-152, slightly inferior for the ME-209A. Stall speed is the same for the XF-15C and the TA-152. However, the ME-209A will stall later than the XF-15C, so a slight advantage there. Optimum altitude, the German aircraft tend to be high climbers, so they do have a 300 meter advantage over the XF-15C. But as seems to be a fairly consistent theme, the XF-15C has a better climbing rate than either of the German aircraft. Okay, now we're getting into our Russian aircraft to compare. And first off, we have the Yakovlev Yak-15 and the Yovakin LA-11, which is a premium aircraft. In terms of gun armaments, the XF-15C is indicated as being superior to both the Yak-15 and the LA-11. So let's uh, take a look and see why that might be. The Yak-15 has two 23 millimeter cannons that do greater damage than the individual 20 millimeter cannons of the XF-15C, but there are only two of them as compared to the four cannons on the XF-15C. So, so that's, again, it's the number of cannons on these aircraft that make the difference and give the XF-15C the advantage over the Yak-15. The LA-11 has three 23 millimeter cannons that do slightly less damage per second, 20 millimeter cannons of the XF-15C. So there are only, there's one less cannon on the LA-11 and they do less damage per second. In terms of bombs and rockets, again, none of these aircraft have those, so not an issue in this comparison. Survivability, uh, the XF-15C has greater hit points than either the Yak-15 or the LA-11. Top speed at best altitude, the Yak-15 has a 40 km per hour advantage over the XF-15C, whereas the XF-15C has a 60 km per hour advantage over the LA-11. The XF-15C has a higher maximum dive speed than either of the Russian aircraft. Maneuverability, as one would expect, both the Russian aircraft are significantly more nimble in the turn as compared to the XF-15C. Not even close. Rate of roll, again, the Russian aircraft significantly more maneuverable than the XF-15C. Optimum airspeed, though, again, the XF-15C has the advantage in terms of speed as compared to the Yak-15 or the LA-11. So if you're in an uh, you know, XF-15C and you don't want to get anywhere near these two Russian aircraft, you want to stay away from them, use your uh, superior guns, 
from a distance. And if those, if the Russian aircraft do begin to close, you want to use your superior speed to, uh, you know, get distance and then re-engage on terms that are more favorable to the XF-15C. Stall speed, Yacht 15 and the LA-11 will stall later than the XF-15C. This is where the XF-15C has a huge advantage over both the Russian aircraft. Um, optimum altitude. A 1,000 meter advantage as compared to the Yacht 15 and an 800 meter advantage as compared to the LA-11. In terms of rate of climb, again, the XF-15C significantly superior over the two Russian aircraft. So basically, if you want speed and better armaments, go with the XF-15C over the Russian aircraft. If you want better maneuverability, go for the Russian aircraft. And also, if you want a high climber, you wouldn't want to go with these two Russian aircraft either. Last up, we have the Mikoyan Garivich I-250. And looking at gun armaments, uh, these aircraft are in, indicated as having the same gun armament capability. Survivability though, the XF-15C advantage there with higher hit points. The top speed at best altitude, the I-250 has a significant advantage of 60 kilometers per hour as compared to the XF-15C. However, the XF-15C does have a superior maximum dive speed by 20 kilometers per hour. And as would be expected, the Russian aircraft has a 1.2 second advantage in, in the turn over the XF-15C. You know, the Russian uh, fighters tend to be very maneuverable, so not a surprise there. Rate of roll is the same for these two aircraft, however. Optimum airspeed, the XF-15C has a slight advantage there of 40 kilometers per hour. However, the XF-15C will stall prior to the I-250. Same altitude in terms of optimum altitude, but the XF-15C has a better rate of climb, which seems to be consistent, the XF-15C being superior to all these aircraft in terms of rate of climb. Okay, so I hope that comparison helps. So we have gone over our builds for both the DO-335A1 and the XF-15C. We have looked at both aircraft's uh, respective stats, and we have compared both aircraft to their Tier 8 peers. So I hope that helps put these aircraft in perspective. Tells you what you can look forward to once you have unlocked these aircraft. Uh, unfortunately, I am not able to take them into combat at this moment because my super duper Alienware laptop is uh, in transit from a repair job with Dell. Uh, so I'm kind of on my uh, baby laptop, which just can't handle uh, that type of gameplay. But I did want to get you a craft review as soon as possible. So I hope you have enjoyed this video and I hope that if you are able to unlock these aircraft that you have tremendous success with them.